lost my footage for the unboxing of this. Now, luckily they show pretty much everything in the box in their instructional video. You can find this online, I'll put a link in the description for it. The software is pretty self-explanatory, you just open it up, install it, it works great, it's simple. So I'm going to get into the parts it doesn't show. Here we are in the program, the first thing you have to do is calibrate it. So we hit calibration. There's going to be a prompt to show you which direction you should orient, then it has the camera right next to it showing you which way it is right now. Uh, some other settings are the brightness, you can change that and it'll increase the brightness of the camera so it'll pick up more. Two or three is usually pretty good. So I'm just going to orient the board properly. Okay, then you hit start. Now as it scans it's going to flash yellow over the dots that it recognizes. And what I found is if you start low on the brightness and then if it doesn't pick up all the dots, increase the brightness and just keep doing that until it recognizes the dots. Okay, so it prompts us to orient it to the right. Do that then hit start again. Alright, so I hit OK, I'll hit scan, and you hit automatic scanning. I'm just going to do middle detail, I guess we can increase the brightness since you don't have it as protected. Usually I stick it in a box and then it's completely dark inside there. Just hit next, um, then you choose how many times you want it to scan, and then you hit scan. Alright, so that first scan is complete, it pops up this window, um, you can choose whether to continue scanning with a different orientation or just hit cancel and then you'll be done with the scanning portion. I'm going to try to get some of those hollow voided areas uh, a little better scanned, so I'm going to hit OK, then I'm going to orient the object in a slightly different position, and then I'm just going to hit scan again. I'm just going to hit cancel because I'm done with scanning right now, but this is the final model that I came up with. I did a much higher detail scan earlier, so I'll show you that model in Cura. Now if you're done taking multiple scans and you're happy with your model, then you just hit finished. If not, you can try editing it with the different tools they have here. I tried messing with them, they're not very intuitive or helpful. This is pretty much just a plug and play software. You scan it, you finish it, and honestly, I prefer to edit it in Mesh Mixer outside of this. So now that it's finished, you hit Reconstruct. So it brings up this next window, gives you the option of ceiling or no ceilings, and they both seem to work just fine. They both make an STL, but no ceiling can always be turned into a ceiling model in this program. But once you make a ceiling object, you can't go into the no ceiling option. So you can choose that, how it's done, curvature or non-curvature, basically how it's connecting the points if it tries to curve them or just make straight lines. Um, I'll just show you the no ceiling. All right, it's complete. And this is what the final product looks like. Now there's some holes in this one. I'll show you the other model. You can easily scan it to the point where there aren't any holes. It's not that hard. Um, but yeah, that's basically the process. That's all I wanted to show, really. If we go back to the beginning. We're done calibrating. We want to scan. So you can see there's professional scanning option. And I thought that this would be how you get the full volume. It says in the advertisement that it can scan over a meter by a meter by a meter. and what I found is that's not true. So I thought if you stick it on the tripod, much like all the other scanners, like ion scan and so on, you'd be able to scan a bigger volume, change and adjust the distance between it and the object, maybe still use the turning plate, but 
that didn't seem to be the case. You'll see, if you hit professional scan, it literally just lets you choose the brightness and <clears throat> how much you want to rotate the object. So if I say 10 degrees, it'll rotate at 10 degrees. If I hit minus 10, it'll rotate back the other way. So it just lets you finally adjust what is already in the auto scan. It lets you also use the mark stickers and whatnot. What I found is when you put a large object on the scanning plate, it doesn't pick it up. I'll try to show you that right now. So as you can see, there's red on the model, obviously less than a meter by a meter by a meter, and it can't pick it up. I don't know what else to say. I've tried unplugging it and plugging it directly into the computer, but the only way to plug the power source in is through the frame that they provide. So the scanner head has to stay on top of the provided design frame. Otherwise it doesn't work. And without removing it from there, the projector can't pick up anything bigger than the rotating plate. It may very well be possible to get the full scan volume that they advertised using the professional scan if you had the proper adapter for the power supply. But without specifics on the voltage and amperage for what power supply it needs, I don't want to experiment with such an expensive piece of equipment. I also want to note that there's no mention of the professional scanning option in the instructions. I will leave a link to the manual in the description. As for the quality, one thing I noticed that was kind of strange was that no matter how many scans I did, the file sizes always ended up being the same size. I tried uh, to scan something with over 10 iterations of the high detail scan mode and it came out to be roughly the same file size as one I did with only four iterations. I can only assume that it's because the software is reducing the amount of points. All the file sizes average around 50 kilobytes. As for price, I was able to get mine with a coupon. I'll show you a screenshot of what I had. It was able to bring it down to roughly about $1,000 before tax. I'd say if the professional scan option were to work, then I would say this is a fair price. Looking at the quality of the print versus what I have seen online, then it is a close second to EinScan and it saves you roughly $500. Such a compromise is perfectly acceptable for an entry level desktop white light structure scanner. The bottom line, if they were to include the proper power supply for doing the professional scanning option, then it would be totally worth it. I think you get what you pay for. It's slightly cheaper than Ein scan. You get slightly less quality, but it gets better than what I believe a laser scanner would do. In the end, it's a great scanner for the price, especially if you like a plug and play, simple, easy to use scanner. If it were to have the correct power supply for doing the professional scanning and it worked, then I would keep this, but since I can't prove it works and don't want to risk it, I plan on returning it myself. So thank you for watching my review. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.